Kaminga's game high 26 was complemented by three other dub starters scoring in double figures, while the bench mob big three of Thompson, Paul, and Jackson Davis dropped 48 on 20 for 34 shooting. Santi Aldama tried running through Draymond on his trot back on defense, which the dub's enforcer wasn't just going to sit there and take. <laughs> After one Grizzly tried toying with Green, it was then Desmond Bain doing the same and in turn knocking down his 39-year-old man in charge. Cooler heads would prevail, but not before Jonathan, Draymond, and company took revenge for Aldama and Bain's disrespect to light their fuse box, taking care of business by winning quarters 2 through 4 by a combined 20. More on the bench clear and brawl, Chris Paul's longevity signified by a rare stat line, in addition to JK and TJD game breakdowns, analysis on Clay thriving in a bench roll, plus more you can't miss coming up. Right quick, just 12% of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Appreciate your support to the utmost extent. Back to the content. After Aldama was taught some respect, a second scrum, this time being a Desmond-initiated tussle, would send Memphis's coach to the floor. Draymond would state on his podcast that Taylor Jenkins took a dive. And then Taylor Jenkins took a dive. Taylor Jenkins milked it, and I could not believe that he milked it like that. Yeah, Jenkins would be alright, but his team wouldn't be, as after causing two scraps with someone you should know not to mess with, to make it a double-digit advantage entering halftime, Green would go right through Aldama on the fast break and let him hear about it afterward. Draymond would continue to use the altercations as fuel by finishing as a game high plus 25. Just like D'Angelo Russell's lesson about Stephen Curry a few games prior, telling LeBron to go at him before D'Lo instantly got hit with karma, Santi Aldama and Desmond Bain learn what happens when you disrespect Draymond. These are four-time champions we're talking about here. Providing them with added motivation only hurts your chances even more. Chris Paul isn't a champion quite yet, but finally on the right side of the rivalry he had with his dubs team in the decade prior, CP isn't about to let poor playoff seeding throw off his course to capture that elusive title win. Paul's starting to display that he still has a lot left in the tank at almost 39 years of age. The point god lived up to that nickname by compiling 14 assists to zero turnovers against Memphis. The Warriors' 12-time All-Star off the bench acquired by a rookie GM Mike Dunleavy last summer in exchange for Jordan Poole became one of just seven players this season next to teammate Brandon Pajemski, Washington's Tyus Jones, Indiana's Tyrese Halliburton, Houston's Fred Van Vliet, and Denver's Nikola Jokic to drop at least 14 dimes without committing a single giveaway. The accuracy, rhythm, and know-how for from Chris are still a sight to behold after all these years, passing traits that have made 2005's fourth overall pick out of Wake Forest University the third leading assist getter in NBA history. With still plenty of legs left in his jumper as well, this patented fake bounce pass works to perfection, giving Chris room to beautifully fall away for this midi on the baseline with Conchar late to contest. Post game, it was Paul, however, crediting the opposing prospect he coached as an AAU player being GG Jackson, who led the game with 35 points while playing lockdown defense. Evidently, the future Hall of Famer mentored this Memphis kid well because the 19 year old's passion for the game, and based off what I saw, in addition to how well he's been playing recently, this man's upside is seemingly unlimited. The youngest player in the NBA, and GG Jackson, is showing he's a name to watch out for. Rookie can ball. Klay Thompson continued to thrive in a bench roll, as while it might be nice to get his production to start games, Pods is still providing hustle, albeit with his efficiency in scoring, having as of this recording fallen off. However, Thompson seems so damn comfortable playing next to Chris and Trace, it's a unit he's embraced from the moment he was given the sixth man role. All off the bench in the month of March, in 10 games, Clay's given you 18 points in 26 minutes per game while attempting an average of 9 threes and knocking down an elite 44% of them. If Thompson can keep his defense where it needs to be while locking in to maintain both the right shot selection, which is most critical, but also the proper shooting flow simultaneously, the dubs have something with KT off the pine that could win them any given matchup. 
Jonathan Kaminga's work off the ball got him cooking as a backdoor cut on Bain and dish from Green got him a dunk before a five-out handoff action with Green and Curry results in him catching an overhead pass and one-two stepping into a triple. He'd then get it going off the bounce, driving to his left and stopping swiftly for a nice little leaning back J over Conchar, then again attacking left, this time past Jenison and going back to his right for a punctuation. Regarding how JK played in this one all throughout, saying it all was was Coach Kerr, stating post-game that it was maybe the best game he'd ever seen Kaminga play. In the second month of his season where he's averaged 20 plus points per game, certifying himself as one of the most talented young players there is, Kaminga's seven 20 plus point games in March are tied with Paolo Bancaro for the most among players age 21 or younger this month. Coincidentally, the aforementioned GG Jackson is also on this list, so CP had a point. After Curry gets trapped in this pick and roll, Trace Jackson Davis showed us his passing skill to locate Kaminga in the dunker spot with a nifty setup. Trace would then contest the hell out of this Jenison hook, and GP rotating to tip out the board forces Trey to unsuccessfully save it out of bounds to Pods. Credit Brandon for being on the same page with Trace, but more notably, it's how Jackson Davis turns on the afterburner in transition to beat the entire Grizzlies team down the floor for an and one. Man has absolute jets for a center. On the other end, elite POF defense from Paul funnels Desmond into Trace on the second line. Watch the anticipation plus timing from Jackson Davis. He lunges off Jenison just when he needs to, saving Gotham City just in time for the Bane rejection. This next play was a first from Jackson Davis. Off the dribble, he receives a patented Steve Kerr offense back screen from Clay, and Euro steps to the cup for a one-handed hammer. Back to his passing chops, as the Rook overheads the GP after Gary's backdoor cut, a pass that's laced with just the right velocity and precision from Trace. In terms of transition defense, a slight decrease in speed just after clearing the half-court logo lures LaRavia into an ill-advised Euro while being blindsided by Trace's thoroughly trailing backtrack, and it's Swat City. Theo sidestep goes right to Thompson, blocked by Jackson Davis. How Steve Kerr specifically post-contract extension has developed Kaminga and Jackson Davis has been noticeable as of late. The extension has shifted Steve into a trust for his youngins to the fullest extent, knowing they give him far and away the best chance to win. Steve should have had his team more ready for the New York game, especially after the momentum of the Warriors win against LA, which all occurred after this channel's last upload following the loss to Dallas. But no matter the circumstances, Kerr has to motivate his troops more effectively to avoid slow starts, another potential bad habit you can afford to build up. Be ready from the jump and stay poised, focused, while properly adjusting the game plan and lineup as need be. Winning despite just 14 points on 9 shots from Stephen Curry, the 2022 Finals MVP's discipline allowed him to finish as a plus 17 and finish with a 78% true shooting percentage in what was a 21-point blowout dub. Curry's four threes gave him 300 triples in a season for the fifth time in his career, which has only happened seven times in NBA history. Insanity. The Andrew Wiggins 22-point showing was one that you need from him consistently if you have any chance of getting close to even competing with the best of NBA teams. All 15 men suited up for the dubs, with the former professional lacrosse player once headlined in a Warrior video, Pat Spencer even getting minutes. Spencer would get loose on the fast break and spring up for a two-handed flush that got the dubs bench hyped. A special first career basket for Pat, and feel-good wins like this can always help the aura. However, set to take on a Tyrese Halliburton, spicy pea-fueled pacer team that's looking to win five straight games on the road, the Warriors will look to move five games over 500 on the season and just a game over 500 in front of their home fans at Chase Center on Friday night. The Chase Center faithful in San Francisco has to show up with the right energy for the vibes to flourish. On a separate note, what's the biggest key for Golden State at the moment, in your opinion? Best answer gets next video's comment or shout out while competing to be one of five in position to win either a free jersey or shoe of their choosing. Today's commenter shoutout goes to Sebastian Hill, who gives his take on the biggest difference with the Celtics this season. Great answer. Compete with your take down below. This was your boy D Flow, and I'll see you next video.